conformable to the wisdom of the world. It could help all of us out to know that when sin and death entered the world by Adam, then a word entered the world about human. Yes. A word entered the world about human. And that word comprised a belief about human that was based on what you do, what you have, what happens to you, your accomplishments, what other people think of you, your money. It, it, all those things, that word compiles an image about you. Right. And then that word about human was made flesh in all people that were born from Adam on. Meaning, we beheld that word, thought that word was the truth about us. Mm -hmm. And then that word began animating human beings. Mm -hmm. And that's why they find themselves now laboring and toiling for life. And because they're laboring and toiling for life, they find themselves with murder, envy, hatred, gossiping, backbiting. Because if you enlist the flesh for life, life doesn't dwell in the flesh. Yeah. Can't, the flesh can't produce any good thing. Right. So if you enlist your members for life, it's only going to produce the fruit of death. Mm -hmm. And so what God did was he said, let me now interject my word about human into the earth. My word about human, they can be whole my word about their life and should they be persuaded of my word then my word will be made flesh in them and animated in them and then what happens is part of the word of god about our life is this word that's in the world isn't true and that's why the crucifixion jesus died unto that word there was a world in the world about jesus's life as he hung on the cross dying it wasn't a good word was it no i mean you can go read the people's accounts it wasn't a good word yeah. that was in the world about Jesus' life. Well, that's the same word that was in the world about all of our lives that we were believing on. If you've seen Jesus, you've seen the Father. Guess what? If you've seen Jesus, you've seen yourself. Right. Amen. It isn't just if you've seen Amen. Jesus, you've seen the Father. Right. If you've seen Jesus, you've seen yourself. And I don't mean that you're the Messiah or that you're the Logos. I mean the word made flesh in Jesus about human. Right? That was made flesh in Jesus. So if, if you've seen the Father, Jesus, you've seen the Father. But also if you've seen Jesus, you've seen yourself. Mm -hmm. And then what happens is if you can see the Father's word about your life and then realize that's the only truth, then what happens is, is in your heart you consider yourself dead to the other word. That's right. See, Jesus hung on the cross, so what they say? You're the forsaken of God. You're, you're naked. You're worthless. You're the biggest disgrace that's ever come along in the history of Israel. You're the biggest disgrace that's ever come along in the history of humankind. I mean, as good of the things, as good of all the accomplishments as Solomon was, you can look at Jesus and say he had the most negative report of anybody that's ever walked the earth as he hung on the cross. But see, he didn't lift one finger to change that report. What he did was he considered himself dead to that report. He presented himself a living sacrifice. And then on behalf of human beings, he died unto the word in the world about his life. And then what happens is God came and raised him up unto the word he had about Jesus's life so that he could do all of that on behalf of all people. And now we could experience the same thing in our hearts where there's been a world in the world that's come against all of our lives, mm -hmm. pointing at what we have, what we do, what's happened to us, what people have said to us, what they've done to us, what they think of us. And now when we behold ourselves in Jesus and we see him die to the word in the world about his life, in our hearts, we die to the word in the world about our life. Right. We see that that word isn't the truth about our life. And then our hearts consider us dead to it. We consider ourselves crucified with Christ. Right. It's no longer I who live, it's Christ who lives in me. I no longer live according to the word in the world about my life, but the life I now live in the flesh, I live according to the word of the Father about my life. That's what he's saying there. Yeah. You know? That's really important. And that's what the gospel is designed to do, yeah. is to say, listen, there's only one word that's ever existed about human. Jesus. Jesus. That's the only word that's ever existed about human. Right. Now, we were in darkness. We were lost. We couldn't see what God saw in his heart. If we could, you know what we would have said? We would have said the same thing Jesus said. We would have seen the sin and the death in us, but we would have said, nothing can move me from the Father having called me son of 
And so I'm not going to lift one finger. And see, we would have died in the flesh. Sure. But you know what would have happened? God would have come and raised us from the dead. Yes. <laughs> see, but Adam couldn't believe that. <laughs> right? Yeah, right. And so Jesus yeah. had a revelation of the word of God about his life. Yeah. And now we can be made partakers of that same thing through Jesus. So Jesus considered himself a living sacrifice. Mm -hmm. He said, that word that you guys are telling me about my life, I consider myself dead to it. So much so, I'm not going to lift one finger to change it. And then he died unto it, right? Yeah. He died unto that word because he was raised up free from all of that. Right. He was raised up in glory and honor and revealed to be the son of God. How was he revealed to be the son of God? The guy died and he's alive again. <laughs> God can't die. Yeah, right, right. He's an immortal. So right. Jesus was raised up in immortal. So now we know that guy's come from God because God was the only immortal. Now we see another guy that's immortal, and he's in a human body. Mm -hmm. And he's come to testify to us of the Father and what the Father has always thought of us and what the Father intends to do with our life. You want to know what he intends to do with your life? Look at what oh, he did with the life of Jesus. That's, that's right. what he intends to do with your life. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. And now I live by that promise and the view of or the beauty of his thoughts for me. I see the beauty of his thoughts for me, and I see the integrity of his promise to me. Yes. Right. And now that's what I live this life and this flesh I have now by. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So when something tries to come and tell me, are you really the son, Greg? Look at See, I'm a living sacrifice. I consider myself dead to that word and alive to God's word who says you are the son. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm. You see, that's an example of how that looks. Yeah. Yeah. Right? I'm not coveting a good report anymore. I see the good report that I always coveted about my life, that I thought I had to fight and labor and earn to get. I see one has come on my behalf, and he has established an incorruptible report about my life in Jesus. He come and did for me what I always desired to have. We all desire a good report. Sure. Right? Well, God's come and give us one in Jesus. Yeah. Stop, wor stop working. He's like, you see this thing you've been working all your days for? Chill out, man. Watch. Behold what I've done to already establish a good report for you. Just behold the report of your life in Jesus. Oh, but i got to do something to do. <laughs> right. You know, in Hebrews,